Hello and welcome to another episode of the In The Studio UK podcast, hosted by myself, Chloe. And me, Adam. On this episode, we spoke to the experienced artist Robin Shaw about how he got into music, his 2020 single Fight or Flight, and his general writing and recording styles. Make sure to like, subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss an episode. Take it away, Adam. Hello, this is the In The Studio UK podcast, hosted by myself, Adam. I'm joined by the fantastic Robin Shaw. How are you doing today? Hey, hi, Adam. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you, buddy. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So for Good people man. who haven't heard of you uh, before, Tell, tell us a bit about yourself. What, what are you doing at the moment? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Robin Shaw. I'm a singer-songwriter. I live in a village called Bresingham, uh, which is near Norwich. Um, I record, um, I've been recording and making music now for around four to five years with a producer called Chris Hall. Um, in, well, I was in Soho, we're now at uh, a studio in King's Cross. Uh, but of course, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, I haven't been able to be in the studio for the last uh, 12 months. But yeah, sort of, uh, been making music now for around four or five years. So, what were you doing before you, you were making music? I've, I've got here something about street dance, is, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I can't get away from that, unfortunately. Yeah, I used to be, um, when I was sort of 16, I got involved with street dancing in various different talent shows, um, which, which, looking back now, I, I never sort of ventured into the music, I never thought I'd get into music as such. It was, um, I enjoyed sort of the competitiveness of, yeah. of street dancing and the battles and those sort of things. but. Looking back now, it kind of was my, my entry, I suppose, in, in performing um, and my sort of starter point in music, I suppose. But yeah, that, looking back now, it's, it's quite cool. Yeah. Well, would you say, so you mentioned about performing and stuff, does it have your days, you know, your background in street dance, say, was it, has it influenced the way you perform live or just kind of more of a confidence thing than anything else? Both, actually. Um, it, okay. I mean, music aside, it kind of gives you a confidence to feel like you're doing something physically active anyway so it was quite good I mean I, I, I played football and stuff up to I was around 16 so I didn't after I finished that I didn't really have anything that I was sort of doing in terms of sports um, I also played table tennis as well but in terms of uh, you know it, it kind of gave me a, a physical and a mental boost street dancing but then it, it gives you that confidence to then go to perform so then when you you know when you have got gigs in terms of music in terms of singing uh, because I've got a little bit of backlog for being in front of a crowd and being in front of um, different members and people you don't know, yeah. it's not so scary the first time you start performing the scene because you think, well, actually, I've done I've done a little bit of this in a different way. So that has helped me. Well, that's good. Well, we, we won't uh, dwell on your your uh, street dancing class for too long. Um, <laughs> what, what I'd really like to talk about about first would be your, your latest. Well, it's not your latest track, but your latest kind of big hit, which has come out with, uh, which is uh, obviously Fight or Flight. Um, can you tell us the story behind that? You know what inspired you to write it? Yeah, certainly, of course, can. Um, so the, the, my original track called "Fight or Flight" we done about two years ago, mm. um, and it was done in three hours. It was a very fiery song. Um, it was all about uh, personal circumstances I'd gone through in terms of jobs and family, um, yeah. relationship stuff. So it was all sort of very uh, one-liners, really. It was my first venture to slight rap type song. Yeah. Um, and the song done well, but it didn't really have much behind it. And then last year, I was very fortunate. I got in touch with the rapper DJ Ironic, who um, featured and, and made his own version, put his own verse to it. And fortunately, since last summer, the song has kind of has, has took off. And um, I've been very, very lucky to get in touch with someone like him with his caliber and his experience. But um, yeah, it's been a, quite an experience so far. How did you find? You know, because most of your tracks that, that I've, I've seen, at least, it's it's only been you on it. You know, how, how did you find the different experience with with having somebody else on your track as well? Would it be something you'd want to do again? Definitely, I think <clears throat> it's. I mean, it's obviously very nice to have your own song and to feel like, oh, I've, I've. It, it, <laughs> it sounds a bit selfish, but oh, I'm the only one that's been on this. Yeah. But then yeah. I think, I mean, with this experience. It doesn't matter whether they're well known or not. I think any type of collaboration is is fantastic because it, you get to see someone else's perspective on your song as well as what they've got to offer. Um, I certainly felt like, I, I mean, I didn't have any questions when it, when I was approached by him because, but yeah, I'd love to, of course, you know, his, his status and what he's achieved in his own career. I knew it might help m m myself, but. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Any type of collaboration at whatever level you're in music is brilliant because someone else's creativity is always going to help and you get to learn what other people do as well. Yeah. Um, because you can be, like you just said, making your own music and 
sort of you kind of get a little bit channel visioned and it's good to see what other people have got to offer because what you might not have someone else might have and so I, I, I would always encourage not all the time but to try and get the odd collaboration it does it does help you yeah, that's good i mean in in most of the music in fact, as far as i can tell all of the music you've done you've they're you know, talking about collaboration you've had this relationship with the producer chris hall um yes. you know how did how did that start you know t tell us all about that yeah i've sort of um, i do bang on about chris really i'm, I'm very um i'm, I'm really <laughs> proud of him yeah i am I'm, 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 i do sort of uh, boost him up he, when i originally I, I went for an audition in soho um, in 2016 and at the time it was with a company called Regent Street Artists and they because I passed the audition they had different producers they would put you with Chris was just happened to the person they put me with again didn't really think anything of it um, we got sort of work on the first few sessions but instantly there was all sort of good chemistry there musically and and it certainly it helps me develop my writing and recording and yeah he's just been he's been a, you know a, a great mate because he's the problem is and something people don't realise if you're working with a producer and they don't get what you're trying to go on about I tell you what Adam it could be very it could be it could be awkward and it can be yeah. very oh how, how, what do I do because you're kind of stuck with this person for a lot yeah. of hours week after week um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky people say oh Robin your music's great or whatever whatever they want to say and it's very yeah. and it's very nice but there's a lot more there's, there's someone else that is involved so they, you know, with a lot of songs, there's always someone else helping, and I, you know, I want to always make sure that's that's known, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, so would you say you kind of bounce off of him a bit then when, when you're recording things, or would that be first? Oh thing? yeah, just, well, going back to the your original question with the fight and fly, hmm. um, I actually usually we take around about five to six months to get a, a proper recording production finished. Yeah. This I said to him, I want this done within three hours, so I want this. Okay. Two, so it was about a two session date, really. And he, and he managed to, to kind of come up with something within two hours, we both. So yeah, it, we do sort of bounce off each other. And I think that's important um, musically because then you've got a basis to, to go off really. But you know, like I said, if, you've, if you're trying to say, look, I've got these ideas, these are the themes I want for my song, whether it's jazz or hip hop or pop, if someone doesn't have a clue really what you're trying to get at, then it, it could make it very difficult. Yeah, going in a different direction, it's not gonna work, yeah. I exactly. think, um, well, one thing you've talked about there with, with Fight or Flight is that so it took you a few hours. Um, I've, I've been looking into kind of the length of time it normally takes you to make a song. And I've heard, I think your uh, recent one, Higher Stakes, I think you said it took a couple of years before you had that film yeah. done. So what, why does it take you so long? <laughs> it's basically what I'm asking. Well, I, I'm a little, I, I, I need to speed up a bit, don't I really? But yeah. no, I, I think the, the, right, the, the writing part the the high stakes song I started around 2000 and must have been 2018. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my songs, my writing, I, I, I do take my time in the process because yeah. there's a lot to it. And then the the production part probably is, it, it takes you know a few months, mm -hmm. but it's more the writing, it's more getting it together and sort of um, starting it up. But I suppose because of the travelling, because of where I'm from and where I'm recording in London, it, it's, it takes a little while to to go back and forth to, to, to get that stuff done and also to get it done right. I, I'm, I'm a big believer that you shouldn't rush anything. Um, and I, I mean, everyone's different, but I think if you've got something that you know you believe and you think has got some value and some worth to it, don't rush it because it will get done. You know, you don't want to sit on it too long, obviously, but you, you, want, to, you want to know you can get it done right. And that, for me, is something I've had to learn you know over the last few years you're very um it's probably good you take it so so long to do it because I've, I've noticed that in a lot of your songs you're very honest in your lyrics um, a lot of things which perhaps people wouldn't normally want to share you're very open about things is that kind of is that tricky for you to do or do you kind of thrive in, in doing that do you know, first well the first person said that in a long while about the honesty and, and uh, i appreciate you picked up on that adam yeah i i, I do Weird enough, it doesn't faze me. I, I think if you if you're going to make music and you're going to write, you can't lie. You, you can't pretend of, of who you are. Um, I find it very therapeutic to kind of reveal that like I've revealed some you know personal circumstances or things that I found difficult. Um, but it, it goes back to that old cliche: you can only really write about what you know about. Yeah. Um, there, there's no point of me writing about being a tennis player or something because if I don't play tennis, or there's no point of me writing about 
trying to build up a business if I haven't made a business. So I might as well draw on experiences that I've gone through. And as, and as silly as that sort of may sound, it's truth. If you, there's no point of, you know, trying to create something that you're that you're not. So it, it's easy for me to be honest and end up. I don't know. I think I've found a way to kind of make it, hopefully make it work, and hopefully going forward, there's, there's more that I, that I want to show that I can. Um, a storytell almost. Storytelling is the key for me. Yeah, it certainly does come across. And I, I guess in a way, that's potentially why you spend so long doing it to make sure if you know if you are, I'm going to tell these stories. Let's do it right. Yeah. Just taking a quick break to introduce Robin's most recent single. Hope you enjoy and stick around for the rest of the interview afterwards. Hello, my name's Robin Shaw and you're listening to In The Studio UK. This is my single, Higher Stakes. Enjoy. This month I lost 300 pounds. I tried to pick a penny up. Here I am stuck in a rug because I've got no lady luck. The cashier said today's my day. Straight after she said hello. Take a risk and have a go. If you never try, you'll never know. 13 to 2, 18 to 1. Working out the odds and trying to have some fun. Maybe the favourite is where I need to go. But that whole is even, so now I don't know Too many choices, just pick one and see How lucky can a one man be? Lucky deal, red chip, multi-bet, red roulette How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I'm here at 10 at air, place your bets if you dare How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? Lucky deal, red chip, multi-bet, red roulette How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I'm here at 10 at air, These games all go my way All my problems will fizzle away Everyone looks so smart in here Emotions range from high to low Everyone wearing their suits in here Some with a tie and some with a bow Big bet, small bet, lose or win 23 red, gotta give it a spin Telling myself this will be the one Convincing myself until it's no fun Let's see what trick I've got up my sleeve Maybe I'll go for matching number three Lucky dip, red chip, multi-bet, red roulette How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I have a hero ten of there, place your bets if you dare How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? Lucky dip, red chip, multi-bet, red roulette How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I have a hero ten of there, place your bets if you dare How much can I take when Six in the morning, I feel a bit lost These risks and chances that I crave Fortune always favours the bright I can feel my heart pound Watching all these greyhounds Chasing rabbits round and round All these noises, all these sounds On the edge of my seat Sweaty hands and itchy feet Is this gonna be my week Or just another losing streak? Lucky deal, red chip Multi-bet, red roulette How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I have a hero ten of there Place your bets if you dare can I take when I'm winning high stakes? Lucky dip, red chip, multi bet, red roulette. How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? If I'm a hero, turn it there, place your bets if you dare. How much can I take when I'm winning high stakes? Hands in my pocket, my last bit of cash. One more go. Gotta give it a bash. I'm going for the win. Will it come in? No more bets, please. You, you've you've uh, you mentioned uh, previously that you're a big fan of, of wordplay within your music, yeah. and that definitely comes across as well. Um, well, what's kind of influenced uh, you writing in that kind of style? Like, who has influenced that? My, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm influenced by a range of artists, but if I had to pick sort of my top three, I'd say I, I listened to a lot of the streets when I was a teenager. 
Um, Professor Green is someone I've always been influenced by. Um, but I've said this before, for me, I mean, I, I mentioned two artists there who are sort of, you're probably classed maybe in the hip hop, possibly British rap genre, but then I'm, I'm, I'm influenced by um, James Bay, uh, Mumford and Sons, yeah. uh, Post Malone. I, I think for me, I've always listened to music and if it can tell a story, I felt very connected to it. Um, the reason why I love workplace so much, because I think words are fascinating. I think English literature is fascinating. I think, um, like I said, I, I draw upon try and draw upon storytelling, and and I think the the range of words you can get into a song. I, I mean, I, I I do love like clubland music and dance music, but sometimes I'm sitting there and I listen. And I think, cool. There's so there's so much gaps here. There's so much, yeah. there's so much space here to put in, but that's not the point of that genre. That's specifically for that type of genre. Um, so for me, yeah, storytelling. The, the one thing I have found though, when I've been making music, is I've always I've over, over what's the word? Overwritten. I've always had spare lyrics, and I've that's my one <laughs> criticism of myself so far. Is I find myself I'm writing too much, and I'm actually giving myself too much choice, and then I'm thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I'm missing out good bits here. Yeah. So that that's the one thing I'm trying to not do too much, but. I, I don't know, I guess if you write too much, it's not I a bad say, thing. It sounds like a nice problem to have, I think. But, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can understand it's tricky, yeah. Uh, you say that, yeah, it's, it's best, frustrating yeah. sometimes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, obviously, uh, recently we've talked about Fight Fight uh, doing very well and things like that, and you've, you've uh, started growing in the UK, actually internationally as well, from what we've seen. Uh, partic particularly, it seems, on the radio. Um, how, how has this come about that this seems to be quite a big medium for you? Be, I'd be very, yeah, very lucky. I think, um, the, I mean, in terms of radio, I mean, it, it, whether it's, it could be locally in my town or or any, if the country's abroad, it's just, there's just as fantastic, obviously. Um, but yeah, in terms of the, the international radio, that's just been through perseverance and just trying to reach out and, and trying to, the problem is you, there's obviously certain radio stations that will only play certain music, but you, so you want to do a little bit of research beforehand. Yeah. I mean, I'm very really thankful yourselves have, have, have supported me and added me yeah. to your Spotify playlist. You know, I mean, that that in itself, you know, means so much to me. Yeah. The, the more people that can hear your music, the better. And you know, playlists and radio stations are a great outlet for that. Yeah. Um, but you're not guaranteed to get the play, so, no. so you know, to get to get those responses is obviously it mean, means a lot anyway. Tricky business, I suppose. Have, have you got any particular plans for for growing your music further? Have you got any specific plans, or just keeping up what you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm just just going to keep being being as as persistent as I can. I, over the last few months, I've actually found I've had a little bit more success with uh, music blogs and magazines. Um, and I've, the reason why I've wanted to do that is because previously, when I've released music, I've sort of waited to the day, put the song out, and then contact the people. And I, I know it sounds silly, but actually, there's so much importance to getting people notified I think before you know a few weeks before and it sounds silly but I, I haven't really done that previously I've sort of yeah. put the song out and then done the work well actually there's work to do beforehand really mm -hmm. so yeah more music blogs I think hopefully maybe more more a few more features and um but then yeah I say that you people might just turn around and go no nope, Robin not interested so you can't guarantee yeah, that well, I'm sure, sure they won't yeah speaking of releases of things have, have you got any new music on the horizon anything coming out is what, what can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, so anyway, um, I've got a song called Today's Generation, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a complete overview for, of uh, uh, political and revolutionary changes we've sort of seen over the last year or two. Um, it's inspired by the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire. Right, okay. And I, I mean, I remember hearing that on the radio a few years ago, I thought, oh, this is, this is so cool. I thought, imagine sort of trying to do a song that kind of doesn't go too much into too many things, but just has every little thing going. So to give a little bit of an insight, it's it's got uh, lyrics about Gogglebox on TV, to the political situations we've seen in America, to the revolutionary changes, to some of the stuff that's happened in the pandemic. So it's a complete variety. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about it, I must admit. I am, that's probably, it's something I've got. But, so yeah, and, and a song called uh, Jack the Lad as well, which is a, a, a bit of a jazzy song. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so it's a bit, yeah, yeah, a bit, again, it's, there's a lot of word playing it. There's still got a hip hop theme, but uh, I've sort of wanted to go down a slightly more, slightly jazz route, just to, again, push the boundaries a little bit um, and to add a little bit more to to the, to the what I've got so far. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming and it's, it's just a matter of patience and time. Just, yeah, uh, yeah, so I look forward. 
how, how did you find, um, as you, you mentioned in um, uh, the first song, I'm sorry, the name's gone out of my head. Sure. Um, but um, you, you mentioned, you know, you're talking about variety of kind of political things and lots of COVID and things like that. How did you find writing about that in lockdown? Um, was it harder, easier? Did it help you in a way work through what on earth was going on in the world? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the best, best way to say it, actually, I think. I mean, I, the song, the idea was already there before lockdown, but I think because you've got so much more time in your hands, yeah, you end up writing more, and then it just kind of come together more. And it's really weird. We've all experienced the last twelve months. Yeah. There's obviously been, a, there's a lot of obviously, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things, negative things out there. But you've got to try and find little positives as well, as, as hard as it can be. But yeah. it's interesting. I do think we've lived through a part of history that is not just the pandemic, but you know, the Black Lives Matter, the there's been so many things in other countries, you know. You just, even with the royal, the royal family recently, yeah. You think the the Prince Harry and Meghan and, and everything that's going on there, and you just think there's been so many changes in the last 12 months. It's quite when you take a step back, you think, oh, how can all this happen in such a short space of time? And it's it's quite uh, it's quite crazy, really. So yeah, hopefully, um, it's, it's it's given me a little bit of inspiration to to try and use, you know. Get some material there, I suppose. Yeah, well, look forward to it. Do you have a, a release date in mind for it yet? Or no, we we've got to again with mastering and, and little bits like that. I imagine if I had to pick a month, I'd probably say May. Okay, well, that's good. That, okay. That'd be the okay, earliest. Keep an eye out for that then. Um, yeah, June. If, if you if you do get out in um, in May or June or whatever, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, this summer you'll be you'll be gigging. Is, is that right? Is that your plan? <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I unfortunately, like a lot of uh, musicians last year, I had, a, I had a few lined up, but unfortunately, that was um, cancelled because of, because of what's happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I'd be happy just to get recording again yeah. um, in a studio and not over WhatsApp. I think that's a, it'd be nice to, to go back into a studio, let alone gig. But yeah, if I can, if I can get some gigs in this year, fantastic. Um, yeah, so I, I look forward to that. But yeah, oh, just want you know, people just want to be well and, and healthy and get back to some normality. I guess really. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. How about yourself, mate? Just to throw that question back at you. How have you sort of found yourself with with the, with the lockdown? I've um, oh yeah, I'm not used to getting asked the questions. Um, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's, it, it's been a weird one. I, I've, I've been my first year of university, so I started it this year. Um, so it's all been very uh, very odd. I'm definitely missing um, performing myself and just going to to gigs. Yeah, I'm really looking yeah. forward to. I think everyone is really looking forward to being. It's, it's having a crowd, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, it's been part of the crowd, watch some entertainment. I think it's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have, have a few beers out in the sun kind of thing. So, but yeah, on, the, on the horizon. Uh, speak, speaking of beers, um, there, I do have a quick question for you. So, I, I saw this, this was uh, deep on your Instagram. Um, I believe this was the song Bus to Nowhere, I believe. And you said <laughs> that you sang better after two pints of Guinness. <laughs> and I just, is this something you do when recording most of your songs? Or is this a one off? I mean, I love that you found that. I love that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so <laughs> but it's not something I've done, no, it's not something I've done regularly. I remember, so it was, a, it was like a really nice summer's day. Um, and it was about eight o'clock in the evening. We had about two hours to finish the final part of it and because Chris we'd both been there for quite all day he'd, he'd, he was quite knackered for I was getting a couple of drinks yeah and I think Guinness was the nearest drink we, we grabbed we got a couple of cans well, this sounds a bit trivial but it's actually quite relevant because it's weirdly enough it soothes my voice and actually the, right. the, 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 the rhythm of the song is quite slow yeah. and I thought this has actually helped me here. I mean, it's not yeah. something I'd say I'd encourage people to do because I think <laughs> it can affect you. But yeah, it was it's a true story. It did actually help. Us. But <laughs> so I can't believe you found that. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, well, if, um, if anyone does sorry. end up seeing you at a gig then this summer, fingers crossed, should they make sure they get the Guinnesses in before the gig or after the gig? What works? Both. Both. I mean, both during it as well if they want. I mean, um, if people are listening, Budweiser as well, chuck that one in. But now it's. Um, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It did, did, did help, but it's weird what um because you watch you watch these big you know big people and festivals and stuff, and you think because you have to drink a lot of water to keep your vocals fresh. And I can't imagine alcohol. I don't think it does help at all. But that did. I don't know why, but that did it did smooth me over. So that's quite cool. If it, if it works for you, uh, as you say, keep at it in moderation, obviously. But... Oh yeah, yeah. So, wait, be sensible. Yeah. Well, anyway. Thank you for being on the podcast. This has been uh, Robin Shaw. Uh, keep an eye out for his new stuff to come. 
and uh, cheers. Thank you for listening, everyone. Make sure to support us and follow Robin with all the links in the caption below. We'll see you for another episode in two weeks' time.